Hello, everyone, and welcome, and thank you for joining me today. I'm Kurt Schmidt, president and partner at Foundry, and you are watching Schmidt List, a show meant to help inspire and educate leaders that work in technology and design. And today, today, I've got a treat. I've got one of my favorite people, Julia Fox, joining us. And we're going to talk about all things when it comes to working with recruiters, to finding a new job, to how to do all these things. And we're going to explore them not only just from the average worker, but we want to talk about executive search as well, because there is a lot of opportunity out there for executives in today's world. I want to say thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. Before I jump into my conversation with Julie, and I do have to mention that the book, The Little Book of Networking, my first book is available now. You can get it on Amazon and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's getting a lot of great reviews. So if you're interested in building your career, finding a new job, or if you're searching for a job, it might be a good book for you to check out. So check out The Little Book of Networking. You can find it on Amazon. Okay. All right, let's jump in and talk with Juliet. Juliet, how are you today? Thank you for taking the time to join me. I'm great. The weather's <laughs> warmed up to about like a balmy 36 degrees. I know. Like, I know. I'm seeing a lot of open-toed on. shoes out there. It's it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's it's balmy is the word I would use it. So, yeah. Julia, tell me a little bit about you and your past and the, the work that you do now. Yeah, as many great zigzaggy <laughs> careers have been, I have been the queen of zigzag. Yes. So I've started yes. started off my career in IT. I've sat in that space for a number of years. I also have done a lot of work with human and organizational systems and most recently put all that effort into recruiting. Recruiting mostly in the IT space, but I yep. like to spread the love in all spaces. <laughs> right. T does talk But I'm, I'm tired about... now. Right. Me. I'm retired right. now. I'm in between <laughs> recruiting gigs. Between recruiting gigs, yes. So what what I want to talk about is that this is very timely that we're talking because we've seen and all we see in the news is tech layoffs, tech layoffs for the last few months. Now, some people would argue that some of these are just really opportunistic layoffs, that some of these companies, they have as many job openings as they have laid off people in some of these tech spaces. It seems like in some cases, it's been an excuse just to close out projects that they were not being successful with or trim fat that wasn't actually performing as well as they would. And they just got all these other layoffs as an excuse. I want to ask you, Juliet, what are you seeing today? Are you seeing, are you getting as a, in the recruiting space, are you getting contacted more lately in the IT space than you were maybe a year ago? What have you noticed? Yeah. If I wasn't watching the news, I would think everything was status quo. Okay, it, okay. it has been a very busy year because there's been a lot of shifting. And I do think you're right, Kurt. I think there's been a lot of this. Okay. We have an excuse to make changes right here at home in the yeah. organization, save money, look good on first quarter. But I think I just saw research yesterday, about 70% of those people were hired. Now, that's a system view on it. And I know a human view is that if you've lost your job, this is a whole different experience. And how do you reframe yourself in this atmosphere? I think if we go back like 10 years, people used to completely do a different thing. The advice was all content. Get a good resume. Make yeah. sure you have the keywords that are Search yes. on the gotta have the keywords for the span. ATF. yeah and now it's less about that partly because resumes can be faked yep. references aren't good ways of knowing how people work it is a whole new world now and to your credit writing a networking book is probably the most <laughs> best advice people say to me yeah. they're like okay so say I'm gonna move jobs or get a new job in the next 10 years, what do I do to prepare myself? And I'm like, all right, if you've got 10 years, it's yeah. just like a tree, plant it now yeah. and do your networking now and work with other people. It's a whole new world about how you get a position because we are blending work sure. and personal lives and it is going to be that way in getting your next job. Yeah, for sure. In either way, yeah, to your point, whether or not you're watching the news or if you're living in reality too, is that there's always opportunity, right? There's always going to be opportunities to grow and build your career. But let's talk about executives specifically for a minute, because I know that's a sweet spot for you. What is the difference? And what is the, is there a different mindset an executive needs when they're doing a job search 
versus your traditional sort of line worker or whoever else. Yeah. What's what's the difference? Do they just need more golf club memberships? Is that what? <laughs> Is that, that what, helps, I guess. That's, I was going to say, I don't, I don't, I'm really curious to hear your experience with placing executives. Here's what I think there is a huge difference. And there's a difference. I would put these in categories of how long you've been in that job. If you've been in a job for 20 years, you have literally no idea what's going and getting a job outside of here. The thing I would suggest, so if I were to break that down, if I were to break it down, Say you've been in a job for 15 to 20 years. Yep. Say you've been at Medtronic. I know several people who've just left there because of their cuts. And you're reframing yourself to go forward. The world of job getting is totally changed. And what you need to do is to figure out a way to give back to your, find a network and give back to your network. And it's as simple as that. A lot of times we say, you should really, get, your book even says it, right? You should really get out there and network. And here are some simple ways to figure that out. And you even address that in your book is that blend between being authentic yeah. with people that you know and doing it to get a job. Yes. And here's what I say. Know that networking will get you to that job. Knowing people in your world and in different sectors, being yep. interested in them, all of those things needs to be at the core of what you do. But when yep. you sit down and network with someone, put it all aside and say, Kurt, tell me about you. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Because again, it's, that's the one thing is that as an executive, I could see people thinking what they need to do is go out and talk about all of their accomplishments and talk about all their, all their, the, the metrics and all of these things and talk, lean into talking about them themselves when it's actually the opposite. They need to be figuring out what do other people need and how can I be supportive of them? And how can I do that to your point? Intentionally. Um, because those are the types of people in, and whether or not we call them executives or we call them leaders, those are the types of people want to hire these days. They want to hire someone especially in a leadership position that's going to get buy-in from the teams and from the people that are working with them, not somebody who is just can fill out spreadsheets faster than other people, make an ERP or a profit and loss sheet look really nice, right? Well, and that's the thing. As an executive, the further you've gone up the ladder to director, manager, director, VP, executive, the further you are from the content of where you're working. Right. So even if you're a CFO, finance has changed so much over the years. AI is going to start taking over much of that finance yep. piece. Yep. As a CEO, your world has changed, not only from COVID, but from global environments to countries and political implications. There is a world of things to learn. There's a world of things that you need to put back in your arsenal that you right. may not have worked on this time that you've been at something. Yeah. You may not understand the cutting edge technology. You probably should. You mm -hmm. maybe not understand what AI tools do and what the implications of using them. You yeah. should. I don't care yeah. who you are, right? So it's this retooling. And it's actually kind of fun. It's, it should be. It's fun. You're looking at what's new and what's brand new. And as an executive, you are not going to move from a position that you are possibly let go of to a position just like that with another company. You're going to move into a position that has much different expe expectations. Yeah. So you need to renew yourself, right? Yeah. What is it? And it's exciting. Okay, wait, no. I can choose what I do. <laughs> what does that mean to me? And here's the, one of the biggest mistakes I see executives making in that job transition, and that is not putting their stake in the ground. You need to put your stake in the ground. Here's how I usually explain it, right? A couple of good key things. It, I explain your talents, your resume, everything you bring to you as all the sand in an hourglass, right? Mm. You are all that sand in an hourglass. Those talents and those skills are contained in that glass. You will not lose them. So you don't have to worry about saying, I'm just going to do a shotgun approach. I could do this or I could do that. I could do this sector. I could do that. Yeah. 
figure out which sand is going to fall through that first. If you had to pick the sand, pick the talent, pick the focus area, put it through. And what people worry about in that sense is that they will miss out on opportunities. But the right. contradictory fact to that is you will miss out opportunities because you didn't put your, your stake in the ground. And what yeah. I always say, it's like this, like that sand comes through, right? The sand comes through down to the bottom. All your talents are coming there anyway. And they're going to say, Kurt, you're really good. Kurt, there's so many things. What am I going to say? You're really good <laughs> at networking. But now we really need your talents in software development, right? Yeah. Now we need your talents in building a product. I didn't realize that you had those things. Let's build a position around that. Yeah. That is right. my number one. The other thing that people tend to do, especially if they've been in a job for like 20 years, right? And they tend to look at a new job like they're panicking. If they're not working, sure. they're panicking. Yeah. And I call, I call this the polywog stage. And it's, the, it's that interim between a tadpole and a frog, right? So all the things you used to know, all the decisions you used to make as a tadpole no longer work because now you're a polywog, but you're not yet a frog. You're not there yet. So what I always say in that transition time is it's going to seem like everything's wrong. It's going to seem like nothing is happening. It's going to seem like you're falling apart emotionally, but it has to. You have to shed that old you in order to embrace the new. And so I always say, be comfortable in that chaos. Be comfortable yeah. in that polywog stage. Yeah, I love that. I love that analogy. People can be very, like you had talked about, people can be very black and white in this sort of thing. And I understand that there's numbers of shades of gray there. And I was going to add to what you'd said is that if they are all inclusive, they might get put up for a job that they're not interested in. And I've seen right. that. I've seen that over and over again, where I've had people contact me and be like, well, I've got these two offers, but I'm not sure about them. And I'm like, well, if you're not sure about them, I'd probably say no. It's either hell yeah or hell no. It should be, in my opinion. Like, I'm really excited. But people are like, this this could be a good next step in my career. And this and that. I'm like, yeah, that it probably isn't if you're going to be not excited about maybe. it. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. And, and one of the things they say, and I did this once, I had a job yeah. once where I worked for a foundation and my job was to increase engagement. Okay. And so I was so proud of the fact that I had taken our events from like 30 events and through partnerships with the university, moved it up to 150 events. I put that on my resume, right? Yeah. Coach looked at my resume and said, oh, so you want to be an event coordinator? And I'm yeah, like, no, right. exactly. I don't want to be an event coordinator. <laughs> and she's as proud of you, as proud as you are of that accomplishment. Unless yeah. you want to do it again, don't put it on your resume. Right. Yeah. You don't want to open that. You don't want to open that. Okay. So let me ask you, if I'm somebody who's recently laid off, let's say whether or not you're executive or not, better, do you have different advice? What are like the first things I should do once I get that? And obviously there's going to be an emotional response, but once I, that sort of dulls for lack of a better word. What are some of the first things that I should do once I've got that notice? Okay. First thing you do is not panic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, Don't panic. panic. Yeah. Right. The world is um, not it's ending. It's real. It's that it, it, I, threaded through this entire suggestions is just give yourself a break. This is not going to be forever. This is a blip on the screen, a yeah. moment. But I say, reach out to your friends and your colleagues, people you used to work with, people that used to work for you, people that you're connected to. Mm -hmm. Just kind of talk through what they're doing, learn mm -hmm. about their environment. And I would suggest reaching out to recruiting agencies. So yeah. you had suggested that maybe we think about how we work with recruiting agencies. Sometimes yes. if you're just out of a job, a recruiting agency will seem like a godsend, right? They're asking you all these questions. Right. They're really narrowing in on what you want. And then nothing. Then nothing. And that's what happens with many recruiters <laughs> that you work with, right? right? They're busy with people. Unless they have something for you, they are not getting back to you. So you, a recruiter is one recruiter or five recruiters are maybe not going to be very helpful to you. 
reach out to many, talk to them, find out. Here's what I suggest. There are some big dogs in town, recruiting agencies, yes. and, the, and you should definitely connect with them. You should connect yeah. with them all, but you should spend your time creating relationships with the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. There are people that have spent their time networking across the Twin Cities. Yep. They know your area. They know yep. your space. They yep. know wherever you are. They Might have, have the pulse of business. Yes. And they're going to say s the similar things. So start that. Then I would start with some key, especially if you're shy, right? Just some key people. Use those first networking introductions yep. to ask. Ask for it. Hey, do you know anybody that you think that I should meet? Or is there someone yep. in my space? Or is there just someone you think is a great networker? I'd love to meet them. Would you make an introduction? Yeah. Yep. Always yeah. do that. And yeah. then continue to follow it through. Now, you have suggested making that a discipline. I suggest that's a good idea, too. I almost would say, I almost would say, don't apply directly for a job. Yeah. You yeah. are. It's rough. Unless you know someone there. Unless, right. someone unless they know it's coming. Accepted, yeah. Don't apply directly to a job. Yeah. Unless it's you got something reinforcing that application. Yep. There's yeah. just so many false resumes going in and false True. applications right now. It's so easy to get lost. Yep. Use your network. Find if you're attracted to a position. Use your network to see who you can know there. Yeah. One of the other things I say to do. OK, so in tandem with that, one yeah. of the things I always say to do is to go shopping, go <laughs> shopping for a job, just browsing. You're going to go on Indeed. You're going to go on Monster. You're going to browse te titles and positions and accountabilities. Yeah. You're going to become more and more attracted to a different title. You're going to see yourself in those jobs. You're going to start to see the qualifications and the, the actual work those job descriptions are saying you're doing and make sure that the way they're phrasing the accountabilities and the qualifications, if it's you, make sure that phrasing is identical. Yeah. Because it's not, you're not making it up. You're looking for the way someone has phrased the thing you've already done and you bring it over and make it. And then get that resume on LinkedIn <laughs> because re recruiters all over the nation are looking for you and they can't find you unless you put those keywords on your LinkedIn. Yeah. The funny thing and about LinkedIn is that I think it's 70% of their revenue comes from recruiters. Oh my is, God. is from recruiters paying for premium and those types of things. So you would think like a lot of people would think like it's sales, but it's, it's recruiters that really pay for LinkedIn. Absolutely. Recruiters yeah. pay for LinkedIn. So yeah. use that, especially if you don't want to spend two years looking for a job. Make sure you put all the dot, all the I's and cross all the T's that are easy things to do. Getting yeah. your resume and your LinkedIn up there, making those network connections and just keep yeah. moving. Yeah. yeah. One question I have for you is that I get a lot of people asking or they contact me and they are like, oh, I hired a resume coach or I'm going to hire. I'm thinking about hiring a coach or whichever. What's your take on that? Should I hire someone to help me with my resume? What's usually your take? Because you've looked at a more resumes than probably anybody who's watching this just in their lifetime. I looked at a lot of resumes. It really depends. It really, de it, yes. The answer is yeah. You should use someone, a coach to help you narrow down on your personal branding. There's some great suggestions of people out there. A resume writer, which will also help you narrow down. But I would caution your approach to that mm. are not going to write your resume for you. No. You are going to have to be extremely involved so that you can put yourself into it. It's very hard to guess as a brander, a personal brander or a coach to, to do that. But I do think people need help writing resumes. I do, do think so. It's so hard to get started on that blank piece of paper. It that sure is, is. You, right? Yep. And yep. I, I do suggest it, but know that you have to be a, a, a actual partner with those, those people to really get a good outcome. 
Okay. Know what you want. So let's talk about resume or even you can translate it to LinkedIn profile. But what are some absolute do's and some absolute don'ts? What are some obvious things that you've seen that people do that they should not do either in their resume or on their LinkedIn profile or things that you've seen where you're like, that's awesome. More people should do that. Or exactly. well, from your experience, right. what's what are some of those do's and don'ts? Okay, absolutely. The part of your resume that is the most important is the first third of the page. There's several reasons why that's important. You need to summarize your skills, your qualifications that match those job descriptions that you're really attracted to, and they need to be upfront. Number one, there's two reasons for that. One, a lot of people don't read all the entire resume. They're going to read the yep. top third of the first page. Yep. So you want that piece to really make a difference. The other is just a bunch of grammar stuff. And I know we live in a world where we're texting TY and BRB and all of those things. <laughs> yeah. But many of the people that are hiring you really do care that you haven't yeah. put your resume in. Don't put it in first person. Put it in third person. Don't have random punctuation. Make sure that your sentences say something. There And never put anything on your resume that you don't want to do. Never. Yeah. I don't care how proud you are of it. Don't <laughs> never put anything. On. So that's what I would say. I would say. There are a couple of different formats that I like in a resume. We've gone back and forth. Back in the day, it was like the longer resume you had, the more cool and the more experienced you were. Then it yep. was get your entire resume down to one page. Yeah. And I think we're a little bit um, growing away from that a little bit, that it doesn't have to be one page. But the idea of that is that it has to be succinct. It has to be easy to read. There's got to be not, a reason it needs to, that it takes up more than one page, not just because it looks like you're more experienced, right? Exactly. It's It needs to be easy to read. You need to spoon feed everyone yeah. reading your resume. Yeah. They are not going to look for that experience on there. They're yep. going to they're gonna want it to pop out for them. Yeah. It's some of the things that people do, which I think are smart, this is like planting a tree 10 years ago, start your networking 10 years before you quit your job or you lose your job. But this is a lot like that too. People will go into their resume as they're working through um, and keep adding their successes, the things they've accomplished. Yep. <laughs> don't send that version of the resume out. We don't. Use that as a way of getting to those pithy, succinct statements. Right. Yeah. I tell people a lot like, Stats are really great for resumes because they're like you to your point, they pop out, right? It says increased by $2 million, increased this, or impacted a team of 40 people or things like that pop out versus where I see a lot of people do in their resumes is they, they might say project manager and then they just write out what a project manager does. I'm like, I know what a- <laughs> Or they describe I, the company. Yeah, yeah right. Person. You describe the company and it's like, I don't care about the- company. I could Google them if I cared about that. I already know what a project manager does. I'm hiring for one. So you don't need to, ex <laughs> you don't need to explain to me like managed projects and time, people's Ooh, time. I'm this uh, version of a project manager. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, but to your point, when it's you doing it about yourself, it is so hard to do that work. And so having someone there to help coach you, I think is really powerful, especially if you're in a sector that might be even harder hit. And, and to your point, you want to stand out a little bit. And some of the ways to stand out is to be not more and more robust than other people, but to your point, be more succinct, be more surgical than just dumping a bunch of things on a page. But so many, there's so many myths out there about ETS systems and how they work. It's like people talking about algorithms. It's like, you've never written an algorithm. Why are you talking about, <laughs> you've never, how can you talk about TikTok's algorithm or Google's algorithm when you've never even written one? What's it? What's an algorithm? Come on. Yeah. Do, yeah. Do you really know what an algorithm well, is? So that's the same thing with, I see a lot of these people, like, especially because the one page resume is one that stuck out with me a lot more recently, especially because of the doing the networking book and talking with people. And there's some people out there, it's got to be one page. And I'm like, it does not need to be. <laughs> it needs to be one page. If you can, to your point, make a great showing in one page. If you need two pages, you should use two pages because you might, especially to your point about executives, 
right? Usually if I got a resume from an executive that was one page, I might question that, right? Yeah. <laughs> do, are they experienced enough? Have do they, they have enough, enough experience? Mm -hmm. Or to your point, did they start in the mail room at Medtronic 30 years ago <clears throat> and then were a senior VP of, I don't know, mail? I don't know, whatever. I'm sure they have that position. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So one other question I want to ask you, obviously there's also speaking of myths, which I like to bust here. What are differences in women versus men when it comes in from your experience and how we're, we're expressing ourselves and how we're applying for jobs and how we're looking for them? Do you see any differences in the challenges, especially in the IT space? Almost always. And okay. I'm surprised I'm even saying this nowadays. And I've been very involved in women in technology and it's almost- I know. Almost always, women will underrepresent what yeah, they what they themselves. deserve. Yep, almost always, and so I'm always getting them to pump it up. On the other hand, I'm sometimes having to temper white males in <clears> the <throat> way they present themselves because they're not presenting themselves in a way that is empathetic to DEI needs, open to other fully embracing the I, me, I did this, I did that, I did this, right? Yep. Both ways, I would say, lead, people understand nowadays that leaders bring different qualities to the table. Most of those are about listening, about being empathetic, about understanding where your power is in yep. your team, nurturing them and helping them get there. And this is a whole different type of leadership than was in the past. Yeah. Command but and control see, was in the past, the Jack Well CEO handbook, right? And I'm telling you, if you're in a command and control company, your layoff is coming, right? Yeah. Because yeah. they absolutely cannot survive nowadays. Can't yeah. be in innovative unless they have embraced a different kind of leadership. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah, I find that as well. And so as a white male, it's always difficult when I'm people that it's pretty easy to coach other white guys is get over yourself and you'll be fine. But <laughs> which is something I have to tell myself regularly. But yeah, like I found with with coaching women in the space, it is a lot about confidence more than anything. It's not about skill set. It's not about competency. It's not about the ability to get the job done. It's none of that really factors into it. It's really about displaying that confidence and selling yourself in a way that attracts people. But I also understand, especially on the networking side of things, that as a woman or a non-white, the idea of meeting up with strangers and stuff can be a little disconcerting, right? When you personally do networking, what's your advice for maybe other professional women out there for how to do that networking in a way where they can also feel safe and feel empowered in what the work they're doing. Do it in tandem. This is like skydiving, right? If, if you're not ready for a skydive all by yourself, do it in tandem. Yeah. I often will a accompany buddy. other women and bring them into a small group for lunch or coffee. I will do that very often. And I look for that read, right? Are you comfortable doing this? Are yeah. you... Hey, you want to just come along with me? Hey, I'm going to this networking meeting, this big networking event. I'll bring you with me. Let's go together. I'll introduce you. Definitely. I would say take the advice. skydiving approach on that. And there's a lot of people who are willing to do that. You know, there's, I'm willing to do that. And I can name 20 other of my colleagues yeah. that are willing to do it as well. Yeah, yeah, good. I love that advice. I think having a buddy, just like swimming, right? <laughs> <laughs> know where your buddy is, right? At all times. Okay, one last thing. Working with recruiters. Let's say I'm not experienced working with recruiters. You said you gave an example of maybe I've been in a place for a long time. I've had recruiters obviously ping me on LinkedIn with bots and stuff saying, I've got a great job for you. And uh, great, but let me talk about it. Well, can you do the work that I that that I just sent you a message about? You why did you message me? If anyways. Don't get me started. Right. So don't get me started on AI bots. On yeah, don't get me started on the bots, but ruining the world. But it, it, but again, it is. It does give. It can give people who have worked with professional recruiters bad taste because they're assuming that spam that's coming in their inbox is what it's going to be like working with a recruiter. And to your point, I would imagine when I was younger, I thought you've got stacks of jobs behind you. You just need to reach into them and just hand them off to me because I'm sure you've just, you're just sitting on, it's like a Hollywood. They're just sitting on movie scripts and they're just going to, it feels like they're just going to pick them off of the shelf and be like, all right, here's Game of Thrones. Let's make this. Mm -hmm. So tell me about what are some tips if I'm not familiar with working with a recruiter, 
How do I approach a recruiter? How should I expect that process to go? And just from a high level, from your experience, what are some expectations that you would want people to understand? Yeah. Don't interact too much with a recruiter only electronically, right? Ah, so starting okay. from that, Good advice. LinkedIn, you want to get on a phone or get on a Zoom or get on video and like really talk with that recruiter. Not only will you get a better feel about that agency and how they work and if they're going to pay any attention to you, but you're going to make yourself memorable, right? They're going to want to hear your story and you, sh you, you should tell them your story. You should be willing to lean in. So mm. I say get in front personally, get recommendations for people that will honor who you are. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And start with those recruiting areas that is your area. So if you're in finance, go to the finance people across your area and geography. Check them out. Talk yeah. to them first. Ask them who else they would suggest. Be really specific about your questions with a recruiter. Okay. Are you seeing, what are you seeing for project managers and the IT space? What are you seeing the needs are? And they may come back and say, do you have a certification for a PMP or a scrum mm. master? You should really get the scrum master piece because it's all going more human oriented. And the yeah, budgeting I'm seeing lots of opportunities automated. there. Yeah. Those are the kinds of questions a recruiter, they like to answer those questions. It's like you ask me, Juliet, what do you think about this? I'm more than happy to tell you what I think about that. And I think most recruiters are. Your deal with a recruiter is to be memorable. How do you do that? Give them a call. And if you're yeah. an introvert, this really works out, right? You're just on a call, just one-on-one, -on -one, not a big crowd, on a call. That's what I think. I think yeah. that's great advice. Yeah. Be memorable because again, staying top of mind with people is, it can only help you during this time when you're between jobs and yep. making sure that people understand what your status or your situation is because it can change in a moment, right? You have one email could be like, Hey, come back and take over the family business. Okay. I guess mm -hmm. I don't need a job anymore, Juliet. I'm going to go run the carpet store back in Peoria, Illinois. Where did that come from? I don't. I, <laughs> where does any of it? We're coming to your head, Kurt. Where does you don't? Um, you do not want to be up in here. It's a. I mean, <laughs> it's a real mess. I, I don't know what's coming out of your mouth. Seems okay. One other caution I would have about recruiters is yeah, yeah. kind of alluded it to it in the beginning is that they are not going to get you a job. That's not yes. their job. Yep. The client pays them to find the person that fits their job. Yep. So the more memorable you are and the more specific you can understand how to place yourself within your sector or your field, the better you're going to be. And then, of course, go meet other recruiters. Of course, I'm saying just come meet me yes, if I'm, obviously. but I, I think that would be unethical to say. You have to meet <laughs> all these others and I'll even introduce you. How about that? That's great. I love it, Julia. Thank you so much for taking the time today. I learned so much, as I always do in every conversation I have with you. So I appreciate you taking the time. If I want to connect with you, as you mentioned, and I will, ethics or not, I will say you should talk to Juliet if you're looking for a job. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now, this is the person right here. So if I want to find you, Julia, where is a great place to contact you and connect with you? Why don't we just start with LinkedIn? Come, Perfect. come to me via LinkedIn because I have big things coming up. I am opening a retained executive. I'm this is my first announcement, first ever. I'm oh. opening a retained executive recruiting agency called Avid Edge. And, but the mm. thing is that I network with anyone. So if you see, if you want some guidance, you want some connections, I'm happy to meet with anyone. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. Okay, that's great. Julia, thank you so much. You're really a breath of fresh air and I appreciate you sharing your experience and knowledge with the audience. So thank you for taking the time. Thanks, Kurt. It's a joy. Okay. I know I've made it when I'm on Kurt's show. <laughs> First person who's ever said that. That's perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Delia. All right, all everyone. Right. So thank you so much for taking the time to join me. Isn't she amazing? We're all because of the Juliets in the world. So if you've got time, make sure you go and check out the book we talked about a little bit in here. Now, the, the subtle pitches that were made for the book. You should check it out. Take a look. And if you, if you enjoy, pick it up and let me know. Leave a review. Reviews are helpful. And then tell some friends and then tell those friends to tell some friends and then we'll just go from there. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you so much to Juliet for joining me. We'll see you next time.
Nous allons commencer à